you're just going to get better. And also, again, the spiritual report card is how often are you aggravated? And you're aggravated less and less. Like something that somebody says can't affect you because it doesn't matter. Like what someone thinks of you is none of your business. What does it matter? You tell me I'm awful. Okay. So you don't like me. Okay. Like, so what? Really? And you don't know my story. And you're seeing everything through your POV. Hey guys, welcome back to Normalize the Conversation. Today I'm here with one of the most amazing people I've ever been blessed to connect with, comedy writer, producer, and breathwork coach, Lauren Serafan. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I love being here. And it's really, it's so amazing to see someone. I wish I had this tool when I was young. (laughs) I mean, I got this a few years ago. I'm in my 50s. And it's um, been a game changer. I've been a meditator for 16 years and this got you there faster because sometimes with breath work, it is an active meditation with um, breathing through the mouth. For those of you who do not know, it's hyper oxygenating, not hyperventilating. So it's (gasps) and that's breathing in deep into um, our diaphragm, which is where we hold grief, pain, and it releases it. But up here, we're all taking shallow breaths, even going to the doctor. They're like, take a breath. You're like, and this is anxiety, fear, pain. That's where this lives. And sometimes the first time I did it, it changed my life. I didn't know why I was crying. I knew why I was crying. It was the big, ugly cry. And I felt different. I felt lighter. And then I did it again. And I did it again. I knew I would teach it. And I did it every day for a year. And we all like have habits a way we breathe with joy, with depression, with grief. And um, our body just knows to go into that posture or that thinking, and this kind of breaks it up. And so sound baths with the megahertz breaks it up. We're just trying to regroove the brain so we don't go there all the time. And it also brings you really present. The past is regret, the future is anxiety. And there's nothing that connects us to ourselves, our own authenticity. My father is like, um... I'm on the phone a lot with people who are crying. <laughs> My dad's like, oh, I didn't think you'd be on the phone. So it's like kind of being a therapist without saying a word because you're kind of answering your own questions. You're trusting your own frequency. You're trusting your own intuition. And it's really, really powerful. And you think, how could it possibly be through the breath? But you're a frequent flyer. You do this with my group Zoom on every other Sunday night. We do privates. So um, tell them a little bit how it's affected you. So when I started breath work with you, I had gone through a really traumatic event and it had been 11 weeks since I hadn't slept. And I was- That's huge. And rest is, sleep is restorative. Sleep is mandatory. It is. And I couldn't stay asleep. I would sleep for an hour or two and I'd have a nightmare or night terror. And I just, I couldn't stay asleep. I was terrified. And from the very first session- all of a sudden, your body feels like it's vibrating. You kind of feel like you're above your body in a way. And within three or four sessions, I was starting to sleep. And after a few months, I was sleeping seven to eight hours again, which I hadn't again in 11 weeks. It just really changed everything for me. And you would never think through breath work, through breathing that you would suddenly be able to sleep. And I've been doing therapy the whole time and breath work just works in a different way. Right. It was incredible. It it changed everything. What it does, which you don't um, understand is that it is changing your emotional life. And not many things do. Navy SEALs do it, Vietnam vets, um, PTSD. And also PTSD is not just from what has happened to you. It's what you've done, what you've seen. And sometimes we put it in different pockets in our brain and this access it. Sometimes it's one tear. Sometimes it's a big cry. Sometimes you don't cry. Sometimes you laugh. I'm usually crying still. But the idea is that you're just letting go of stuff and you're becoming lighter and it's accumulative. And, you know, it's, um, they call it the, often the gateway drug to meditation because sometimes you, people can't relax. And after this act of breathing, like yoga as well, Shavasana, corpse pose at the end is the most important pose to just be still. And it's the hardest one for many people. And I'm hyperverbal, hypermental. And this really let me relax and really also find my own truth. Also, as a comedy writer, I was scared that meditation would make me not funny. 
right? Like, oh, I'm going to get so zen, be so cool that maybe things aren't funny or sarcasm. My humor changed a bit, but it, you just more yourself. And no part of you that you love is going away. <laughs> you're just going to get better. And also, again, the spiritual report card is how often are you aggravated? And you're aggravated less and less. Like something that somebody says can't affect you because it doesn't matter. Like what someone thinks of you is none of your business. What does it matter? You tell me I'm awful. Okay. So you don't like me. Okay. Like, so what? Really? And you don't know my story. And you're seeing everything through your POV. And your story may be true. And I also like to say that in class or in privates. Fall out of love with one story. We grind on the same 10 things every day. Let go of one. I'm not pretty enough. Um, I'm unlovable. Um, you know, my dad's awful. Um, I was abused. Whatever. It's like, even if it's a true story, stop living your story. You're not the awful things that happen to you. You don't have to be perfect to be remarkable. I suffer from perfectionism. So do you, right? That's why you do so so well. But also kind of loosening that white knuckle grip and just going, I'm going to make a mistake. And even just yesterday, a very dear friend of mine, I just got a little irritated. He's like, oh, thank fuck, Lauren. I mean, I've never seen you irritated in 12 years. And it just makes you human. I'm like, you're welcome, right? (laughs) But the idea that you're allowed to get upset or, and it wasn't even a big upset. It was just me going, oh, you know. Exactly. uh, Breathwork really helps you see who you are in a different way. I think for me, one thing that I've really learned is I learned how much of a perfectionist I am. I learned how much I need to have control and letting go. And even through the breathing, I could see how I didn't want to let go. I didn't want to completely surrender. And it was terrifying. And sometimes we just came from a session and there's always a point in the middle of the session where I get to do I want to keep like breathing? And I get like, cause I feel the loss of control or your body's starting to vibrate. And it's like that switch in my head where I have to be like, relax, breathe, give into it. Yeah. And you do it's, it's, um, it's breath work. It's very, work. very simple, but it takes effort. It is transient hyperfrontality. There's a big word for you. And that's ego death. That's what um, drugs do. Shrooms do alcohol does temporarily. And then it comes back. But the idea is it shuts the ego off, the critic off. So at the end of it, you're like, if I just said these very nice things, and I also, the way I do it, I talk through it and I do affirmations. Some people say nothing, which I can't even believe to some music made by aliens, which sounds awful to me and very woo-woo, new agey. But I do it to pop music and I speak throughout the whole thing. And I'm saying, you know, take this breath like it's the first breath. This is the beginning of your life. This is the first breath of the rest of your life. Get present. And if I said all those things to you and you weren't breathing, you'd think they were nice, but they wouldn't land in the way that they do when you breathe like this. And you can change um, your emotional life. You can, you can go from like homicidal or suicidal to Zen in like 27 minutes, which is, I don't know anything else that does that. And that's really profound, but it's also like at the end of it, you're like, fear is stupid, right? Because when the critic turns off, you're like, just do it. Who cares? Like what could possibly happen? And also terrifying and terrific, the same root of the word, like anything, it's just the unknown. And I have friends who can't sleep, can't go to the bathroom, can't cry. It's the same thing. It's letting go, letting go of the control. I am often like, I'll have friends admit they're control freaks. And I'm going, and there was a time I'm like, I'm worse. I'm pretending I'm not a control freak and I'm a control freak and I'm getting away with it. Everyone's like, oh, Lauren's so fucking chill. Not at all. I'm controlling everything on like a different level, which is awful. And even if it doesn't come off, it's your internal life. It's, I know I'm controlling. If you don't see it, that's a lie, right? And and it's exhausting because I really don't want you to see it. Exactly. So, you know, looking very, very Zen and also not caring look the same. Um, You can be very, very thin, but think about food all the time. You have food issues. You can be very heavy and everyone knows you think about food all the time because you're eating. I mean, it's all you can do is the most honest you can be with yourself. And I think the breath work gets you really honest and you're like, okay. And if I have had a fight with someone, I'm like, you know what? It's okay. Right. There's a time when you think, oh, maybe we'll have lunch in a month and work on it or we won't, or I don't want to like dread that day. 
I just want to be the best friend I want to be where I'm not talking shit about people where I'm really believing it and I get to show up and then they get to have a friend that doesn't talk shit about them instead of I'm keeping you around, but I don't know how much I like you and who's winning from that. Exactly. You know, I have my flaws, but I haven't cheated on boyfriends because when it's time to go, it's time to go. I can't walk, go home. I've lived with men. Can't like go home and just choke it down. And people often want to tell. And when they tell it's for themselves to get it off their chest, leave, let someone else enjoy this person. The gifts have been given and move on instead of, you know, I'm afraid to be alone. So now I'm going to lie to you and then I'm going to meet someone else and then we'll see. And you don't meet someone else when you're with someone else because you might, you might not, but it's not clean. I just want clean communication, right? And breathwork really helps you with that because again, it helps you see who you are. And a lot of times we think we know who we are and we know ourselves. And when you're alone with yourself and you're vulnerable and you're really listening and you're hearing these affirmations and for the first time, your mind's not telling you, no, you're actually hearing it and listening to it. You learn a lot about who you are and what you feel. I, for example, thought I had got in through my eating disorder and I didn't have this body dysmorphia. And as you're sitting there telling me I'm beautiful in my head, the first thing I want to say is no, I'm not. And all this insecurity of every little thing that I think is wrong with me is coming back through my head. And to listen to that and to learn to let it go and breathe in the affirmations that you're saying, it really is life-changing. You are life-changing. Thank you. That makes me feel so good. And I have all the body dysmorphia as well. Being women is rough. Aging is rough. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. Um, it's being a woman in our culture is emotionally violent. Um, it's the culture, it's the images. We all suffer from never, um, not being enough, not thin enough, not rich enough, um, not smart enough. Um, and when you do breath work, you really feel like you're enough for the first time. And I think that's the starting point. That's the entry point where you're like, this feels good. This feels different. And I want to do this again. And I want to keep doing this to feel this way and then you can drop in much more easily when I first started doing the teacher training the hard part is sitting there when someone's really bawling and really holding space for someone who's really really in pain for every good reason and being like I can hear your story you told me your story and you said I've never shared the full story because people cut you off because they're uncomfortable they feel so bad they feel oh my god I can't believe that happened to you or they don't like it or they can't wait to talk about themselves that happened to me that's a big one. Um, and the idea of, um, I also went to a yoga training and they said, when somebody's crying, don't touch them. Because our first instinct is to touch them. We go, oh, it's okay. But that's really our um, discomfort. Yeah. It's like, I'd rather you didn't cry. And we've all had parents who have said that, cry in the other room or husbands, like people you are not sleeping with do not want to hear you cry. So if your boss is male at work, do not cry in front. They're, they're so uncomfortable, right? Like they don't want to deal with it because it's hard. You don't know what to do. You want to make it better, but you also want it to stop. So if you, some, so when you're crying, people, when they're really bawling, they don't know they're crying. Also let them have the full release. Let them cry to the end. It might be one more minute, might be three more minutes. Let them have that full thing. And then they can ask for a hug and they will. They'll want that after. But when you touch them in a way, first you call the attention to that they're crying. They may not know. Then you're also saying it's okay which it's not. (laughs) And you're also saying, I'm not comfortable with it or please stop. Just let them have their reaction. And that's really powerful, but people, it's hard for people. It is. And I think in today's society, we make crying a weakness. Crying is something that you shouldn't do that you can't do. And people feel so uncomfortable and it's all builds up within them. Yeah. You just were allowed to let it out when you needed to, you get that release. And, and also I, I cry mind. during class. And sometimes that gets people the permission to cry, right? Because I'm overcome and it comes and goes. I'm not talking about like, do you remember when I just cried? I cry, I talk through it and I go. And sometimes you can cry and breathe or you can stop crying and breathing. Um, I go through cycles of crying and breathing, crying. I'm so sick of crying. I'm so excited to breathe again. I'm so sick of breathing. I'm thrilled that I started crying. And sometimes you do both. But um, literally not crying is also not taking a shit. I mean, you just have to release. Don't be proud of not crying. It's been five years since I've cried. Don't be proud of I'm a left brain person. Don't be proud of using half of your brain. Meditation, breath work, it gives you golden brain where your left and your right brain integrate. 
that's where you want to be, where the feminine and the masculine meet, where you are this just balanced person. Does that mean you don't get upset? No. Does that mean you don't have grief? No. But like grief is natural. Suffering is a choice. Like, and also suffering is really seductive. Like I have friends that get a lot of attention for being sick, for being needy. Like I'm never needy. And I'm like, why are they getting all the good stuff? Because they're really asking for it. Right. And it's like, Ooh, that would show my weakness. And now it's like, when I need help, I ask for help. And, and I get help and it feels really good. And I show up for everyone. And when also you're a people pleaser, because we're that as well, um, you don't allow people to show up for you. And it feels so good when we show up for them. Why would we rob them of that? Right. Like let them show up for you. Exactly. And that was back to what you said when I told you my full story. That was the first time I felt like someone had shown up for me and a completely no agenda, no selfishness, no feeling of obligation. Like they just wanted to be there. And that was such a major change. It was after this first private session I did. It was the second time I did breath work with you. And I think I texted you and I was like, I think I figured out what's blocking me. And you're like, send me like you everything. Like if you want to send it to me. And I don't know why, but for the first time I was like, okay, let's send it. And you called me. Put it all down. I did. And you called me and talked to me. And for the first time, listened to me and let me talk and validated it. And it was like the first time I was able to realize that everything I went through is valid and it's not okay but it's going to be okay. And I can get through it by releasing it. I don't have to hold on to it. So by you holding space for me in that way, it allowed me to realize that I can start to let it go. And I think I've started. I have a long way to go, but I've definitely- But but the sleep came, the sleep came. It did. And again, a miracle. (laughs) Yeah, totally. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'll be texting her because she's um, in Florida and I'm in California. I'm like, Please don't still be up. She's like, hi. I'm like, <laughs> and it's like 3 in my time. You're like, of course you're awake. Like, don't do bad. But, um, but she got there pretty quickly. And that's also the miracle of you showing up and doing the work. And you were prepared. You were ready. You were ready to drop in. When I also did the teacher training, the woman started crying on the first song who I was working with. I'm like, wow. And John Paul Creamy, my teacher said, yeah, she's been doing it for a while. She dropped in. And now I, I'm the first song I can start crying. And it's just, my body's just like relaxing. And when you just relax, you're like, that hurt my feelings. I didn't like that. And I also didn't know that I thought vulnerability was passive, was weak. Vulnerability is strength and just knowing your shortcomings or just saying this is hard and being real. And in the old days, bragging would feel good, right? Like I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And now I'll say something really heartfelt. And someone will go, me too. Like, I didn't know anyone else felt like that. And that's profound. And that's, that's the creamy center. The, that's the connection. I think COVID also has taught us that, right? What, that we want to connect. That we're, and, and we're not alone. Like humanness. And it's not so much, look, I love stuff. But it's also about the connection and the people and the experiences and taking a little trip. A, a, you know, a day trip, a car trip, a few nights. Also, um, I live with my 91-year-old father. I sold my house in, in escrow. I sold my house to move in with him. And I went from like a 5,000 square foot home to a 4,000 square foot home to a room that's like, you know, maybe 700 square feet. And it's fine. It doesn't matter because I do what I want to do. And I'm here for him. And um, when I go see my friends before I have the vaccine now, but... Everyone took, got tested. Everyone showed up for me so I could hang out. So I didn't come home and kill my dad. I mean, you know, and that's when we were spraying Amazon boxes, you know, like not knowing what we were doing really and really scared of it. Now maybe it's droplets, maybe it's harder to get, but people who were very, very private and reclusive and hermits caught it. I washed my hands. I went to the store once every 10 days. I had food delivered and, uh, you know, I lucked out, but um it's interesting who shows up for you. It's interesting who's in your posse. Like I consider you a dear, dear friend, not just a client and someone, you know, I really want to like, just tell you my mistakes and show up for you. So you don't waste time. Like I did 
we have some similarities, you know, in our stories, which is amazing. And you manifested me, you brought me in. And just to trust that, that I was the right teacher along and not instead of therapy. She's still doing therapy. I've done therapy. Sometimes you lie to your therapist or you bullshit your therapist or you're thinking, I'm paying a lot of money. What am I talk about today? And this makes you clear on, I'm going to discuss this because something came up. And then you yeah. take the next step, which must feel great that you're not walking in there going, I don't know what to talk about. And that feels like a waste. Exactly. And before our sessions, you always like, talk to me what's going on. And then afterwards is usually when I start talking more because all of a sudden I've gotten to that point where I'm relaxed. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm open. I feel more, not safe to be vulnerable, but more within hidden. my own skin. You. Instead of all in my head, I feel ready to talk. And it's just, it's such a magic tool I wish everybody did breath work I say it all the time I think I everything I do I'm like breath work with Lauren Serafan <laughs> hey I love it and um, so my website is just fucking breathe and I'm so excited that um I can have that and go daddy who you know does the they're like it's the coolest website name ever <laughs> um and um for now it's free every other Sunday night next Sunday I'll be doing it at eight o'clock um just um Go to my website, Just Fucking Breathe, or DM me on Instagram at Sarah Fantastic, and you will, um, I'll give you the link, because um, I want you to get on the ride, and then, because the private's a whole different thing, and that's, you know, in person, can't wait to get Francesca in front of me, and, you know, in person on the floor, um, that's different, that I'm whispering in your ear, and I'm, like, over Zoom, I'm kind of like, you know, more, not shouting, but more telling you, but it's a different thing when you're on the floor in front of me, it's all different, but it's really powerful. I couldn't believe I'd never heard of it. I thought it was Kundalini. I thought it was this thing. And it's super, super powerful. In the 70s, they called it rebirthing. It's called a lot of different things. It's just continuous conscious breathing through the mouth. No stopping at the top, no stopping at the bottom. And there is resistance like anything. There is resistance. I have friends who don't like it. And that's resistance. I have friends who say they get a headache. That's resistance. They don't want to do it. Your mind doesn't want to do it. Because it doesn't want to do anything that's good for it. It wants to eat ice cream, watch TV, play Candy Crush, watch porn, get drunk. You know, it wants to do everything that feels good and is not in your best interest. And um, when you connect your mind and your heart and start getting aligned with that, it feels very, very different. And it feels really good. And you honor yourself. And breath work gets you there very quickly. So I'm, I'm honored that I found it. I'm honored that I found the right teacher so I can teach it right and do it. And um, bring it to as many people as I can. I, you know, I don't want to write with somebody. I work with Antoinette Perrigine and we're having a great, um, an amazing um, teamwork um, relationship. And she's entirely changed from the breath work. I don't want to work with anybody. I haven't breathed out. You know, just I want to see who somebody is and really bring your best self. Because all we have, everything happens and all we have is our response to it. And how do we deal with discomfort? You know, do we yell? Do we scream? Do you get cut off in traffic and then call seven people and relive it and tell them all about it over and over? Oh, it's so boring. And who cares? Right? And when you heal, if you want to be more attractive, heal. If you heal, people around you heal. Um, you change the frequency, you bring in different things. And the miracles are lining up for me in such a way that's so crazy. Things that would never happen. And I believe it's breath work. I believe. It is getting just present and that I thought it was present, but I wasn't as present as I thought I was. And I was irritated a lot of the time or people hurt my feelings a lot of the time. And it's, you don't want to be that person. You know, it's like, okay, you're welcome to have that feeling about me. And if you don't like it, okay. If you don't like me, that's also age of 40. I thought, you know, I'm okay with it. Think what you want. And then at 50 again, I'm sure it's 60 again. It'll be that way, but we're all just a work in progress and learning. We're going to make a million mistakes. We're going to make a million more and stop beating ourselves up about it. And it's really, it's very similar to runner's high and you're not, I'm never going to have runner's high because I'm not a runner, but um, runner's high, runners don't get runner's high every time, but this, you can get it every time if you breathe quicker and deeper and just get on and you'll get there. And it's some people, you know, your fingers can get tingly, your lip can quiver, your eyes can twitch. And that scares them, but they didn't realize that through the breath, you can really change your frequency, your feeling. Like some people think they're having a stroke and 
there's been no reported incidents of anybody getting, you know, harmed by this. And so that's great. And people sometimes for ayahuasca do breath work to get their intention for ayahuasca. And then people say the breath work was actually more profound than the ayahuasca. And here's the deal too. You can get off the ride anytime you want by simply going back to breathing through your nose. We're not in Peru vomiting into a bucket. My teacher always says, we're just on the floor on a Sunday night, right? That's so true. I think a lot of people are afraid to try it because they're afraid to surrender. They're afraid to let go. They're afraid of breathing, of meditating, of listening to themselves. And you can get off the ride if you want to. You don't have to push yourself to do it. Right. So I invite everyone to come subscribe to my um, site. I'll send you the link um, and come try something new. If you've always done what you've always done, you'll always be who you've always been. So if you try something new, step out of your comfort zone. Just try something different and see. It may not be for you. I may not be the teacher for you. This might not be the modality for you. But try something different and see what happens because it might just be one of the most profound things that ever happens to you in the first, in one session. And that's what's so great. And you also have to believe in it for it to work. That's also great. Exactly. So if somebody wanted to start breath work, what do they need to know beforehand? Um, You don't eat before, like two hours before. And it's not that um, it'll, you know, anything bad will happen. You'll just maybe feel a little nauseous. So two hours before, some people get cold, some people get hot. So have a blanket next to you put it on, put it off. I thought, oh, I got um, hot. I get hot. Then one time I got cold, right? So you, ne- you never know. That, so it can be different every time. Your hands sometimes might go like this. It's called tetany. And it's because you are um, exhaling, pushing the exhale. It's like, so it's all the works on the inhale. So it just falls out. But if you're a control freak and you're trying to control it or trying for it not to work so you can stop, you're like, Ah, right. And all it is, is your um, O2 and CO2 um, levels are off. But um, you can look it up, breath work, but also saying breath work is like saying fitness. There's many different types of breath work. And some of the best um, teachers um, in the world um, are like this Wikipedic, encyclopedic, amazing, um, like fountains of wisdom about it, but not the best teachers, right? So that's interesting. And just look it up and see what it is. Come to my class, come to someone else's class, you know, and um, I'd love to have you. I welcome everyone. Um, You're never too young. You're never too old. If you um, suffer from like um, heart palpitations um, or something like that, just start a little slower and, and you'll find your edge. But I say everybody can do this. And that's what's so um, exciting is that it's, you know, for everyone, especially people that they feel like they've failed at meditation. Yeah. This, this gives the brain something to do. That's why when you just think of the breath, then the rest shuts off. Whereas when you're thinking about not thinking, you're always failing. And meditation should not be thinking about not thinking. It's like the thoughts come in and you're like, oh, there's a thought, there's a thought. But if Zen meditation is not thinking about anything, that's failure. That's staring at a wall. It's too much. And breath work became a way to process my thoughts and start to let them go in a completely different way that actually made it possible. Because for meditation, for me, I just, I couldn't get through it. All I wanted to do was break down. Right. And I just hope everyone out there tries breath work. And they try breath work with you because you've yes. really changed my life. And I'd love to have all of you. And text Francesca, email, DM her, myself. Uh, my email is laurenserafin at gmail.com, just fucking breathe.com. Sarah Fantastic on Instagram. I'm Lauren Sarah Fan on Facebook. Find me and let's have a little chat. Thank you so much for joining Thank me today. Thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah.